praise the Lord everybody we have gathered in this place at this particular moment in time to celebrate the life of our dear our loving our precious sister Angela Denise James Moore what a saint what a key element a servant in the house of Allen we love her so much and we've come to tell the Lord thank you somebody say thank you we've come to tell the Lord we're grateful and appreciative for the fact that God allowed her in our lives and our paths to encounter her, her presence her effervescence to bless us and so we're going to share uh, in the singing of our opening hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. I want the immediate family to ju join Judge Moore and the family in viewing the body for the very last time. Once we close the casket, uh, this will be the only time uh, that you'll be able to see. Just the immediate family, if you would come now as we sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a fool. Blessed assurance, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a full taste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. submission perfect submission perfect delight visions visions of rapture now burst on my side angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my story is my song praising my Savior all the day long my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day perfect submission all is at rest mission all is at rest happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above filled with his goodness lost in his love this is my story story and you have a song that God's been good to you come on and put your blessed hands together and give God the praise give God the glory hallelujah you may be seated we're going to ask Deacon Douglas Johnson senior if he is here if he would come and share our prayer comfort and you can take the mic to my left to your right Reverend Matitra Calloway is going to come and share the Old Testament reading and uh, the Reverend Dr. Melvin Jones will share the New Testament reading and then there's a musical celebration and I'm going to ask the family if it's all right if I ask Reverend Scales if she would come and she would share a selection in that musical celebration and then we will continue with this celebration to the glory and honor of God. God bless you, Brother Jackson.
attendeth my way. When sorrow like seas, billows roll. Whatever my life, thou hast taught me to sing. It is well. It is well. Amen. God bless you, Brother Deacon Jackson. Come on, let's give Deacon a hand. Uh, Reverend Calloway, you can come. If you would bring that mic with you and come on up here. God bless you, dear. Thank you so much. Testament reading comes from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thine art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thy anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Find peace in knowing that the Lord is your shepherd, and he will go with you all the way to the end. family, we pray comfort for you during this season of grief, and we find words of comfort from John, from our Savior in John 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe in also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, what I have told you, that I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We know that Angela is resting peacefully with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows fall? Why? 
should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven at home when Jesus is my portion my constant friend is he is I over me let not your heart feel lonely his tender voice I hear and resting on I lose or doubts and fears for by the path he leadeth one step that I might see his eyes Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Thank you so much, Reverend Scales, for blessing our hearts and encouraging us in this 
this moment, thank you so, so much for allowing God to utilize you. Family and friends are going to come and share tributes uh, in this order. And you can come to, again to my left, to your right, in this order. Uh, Aunt, Aunt Esther P. Smith and cousin, Elder Roderick A. Carroll, and then our president of Stewardess Board number three, uh, the one that uh, Sister Angela served on, uh, Sister Lummy King, are going to come and share these tributes in that order. Come on, let's give them hand and a clap of praise as they come. And then we're going to ask Sister Cassandra Shanklin, if she's here, if she would prepare herself to share a musical selection for us. about my niece, Angie. We had an assortment of children living at home with their mother. There was Bernice, Angela's mother. There was me. There was a W.J. An assortment of people. You would have thought that we were running a, a foster home. We had everybody in our house. All right. We were taught behave ourselves, go to Sunday school, participate in church, and do the very best you could. Mama wanted you to be a shining star in the community, and that's what we strive to do. Well, Angie finished high school, elementary school, and wherever else she had to go, and then she left the home and went to Morgan State to further her education. And if I forget some things, don't pay it into mind. Don't pay it into mind. If I mess up, just say, well, she's okay. And I'm gonna try to do the best I can. As life would have it, I only had one child. And there she is right there. And Angie became her big sister. Now, we would refer to Angie as little Angie and big Angie, not size-wise. <laughs> it was birth-wise. Angie was born first. We have another Angie in the family. This is big Angie. So we have gathered here today to say goodbye, our earthly goodbye, to big Angie. We are going to do the best we can to hold our chins up high because we know who is in charge. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is in charge. Well, Angie became Kim's big sister. She would chaperone little affairs that we would give Kim. Kim thought her mother and father were too old to be with her when she had her friends over. So, Angie would be the substitute parent. And of course, I would say, now Angie, let me tell you this, we ain't gonna have no behind the tree, down here and over yonder, because we lived in a rural area. And uh, you know, children will be children, no matter the age. Angie did an excellent job with our daughter, Kim. Again, Angie would tease my daughter so hard about her father's hair. 
my husband's sick and his hair is very thin. In fact, he has very little. But when Kim was little, Angie would say to Kim, Kim, go to the store and buy your daddy some hair seeds. <laughs> Kim would be so upset as any child would be because Angie had said, buy some hair seeds for her daddy. We'd come on down the road, going back to Glen Allen, where we lived, and she'd lean over and say to me, Mama, can you buy daddy some hair seeds? <laughs> I would say, where you got that from? And I told her, don't pay Angie no mind. You know she's teasing you. Angie love your daddy. But you know what I'm going to miss the most about my Angie? At night, when she would come, Esther, what you doing? How's Uncle Lester? Well, he's doing pretty good. He's about the same. He's holding his own. What you doing? What you cook today? I said, well, what did you cook? Well, I didn't cook today. I had some leftovers, so I ate that I will say. Well, and to make sure you take good care of yourself, because we are a family of diabetics. Now, I'm going to stop talking. No, I'm not, because I have to finish what I'm going to say. As time went on, I could depend on Angie to call me, and I would say to her, hey, how's Rick doing? He's doing all right. Rick is doing good. And I would just say, now, Angie, make sure you take your medicine, eat. She would say to me, I'm not hungry. I said, you don't eat because you're hungry. You eat it because you need it. Bless her heart. I love Angie. And of course, we had another person growing up in our house that became our sister. She wasn't our sister, but Mama said, treat Priscilla like she was your sister. And that's exactly what we did. We, Angie took over the role of caregiver for her mother, Bernice James, for her aunt, relax and she also helped Kim when I was sick she would come and stay at my house and look after my child for her and she has a very special place in my heart I think I have said no I haven't said everything I wanted to say as time went on Angie kept up with the family Angie would call me, Esther, you know so-and-so and so. No, I didn't know where you get that from. I just talked with so-and-so. I go, Angie, where you find her from? Well, I, I'm fixing. I said, okay, 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 okay. Now she, before she passed, Angie was gathering information for the family reunion, and she was working on the family tree. So she had a lot of information that she shared with me about people I didn't even remember being in the family. But so be it, life goes on. I have a poem I would like to share with you about my niece, Angie. Will you please listen? And after I finish this poem, if I make a mistake, please forgive me. I'm really, I'm not going to tell no tale standing up here. This has really, really hurt my heart. But the Lord has given me the strength that I need to stand up here and share a word about Angie, my niece. This is my book, God's Flower Garden. It's hard to lose the ones you love to see them pass away, the sweetest and the kindest, while others are left to stray. But if we had a garden with roses fair and bright, we'd often pick the loveliest and think it'd be just right. And so it is with Jesus in the earthly garden here. He often picked the fairest flowers, the ones we love so dear. The flowers that are picked by him will never fade away. We'll know we'll see them again, and we'll see them some sweet day. 
Bless you. Travel safe to back home. And thank you for sharing this day with us to say an earthly goodbye to my niece, Angela Denise James Moore. Bless you. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. On Jordan's stormy bank she rose and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where now all of her possessions lie. She's bound for the promised land. She's bound for the promised land. But who will come and go with her? She's now bound for the promised land. There was a reason that I did not put two minutes on the um, program. And y'all could see why. <laughs> God bless you. Um, I, I could just talk just as long as Aunt Esther did about Angie. Angie was the informant for the Franklin family. If there's anything that you wanted to know about anybody in the Franklin family, whether it's those in Pennsylvania, those in Texas, those in California, call Angie, Angie knew it. And, um, and it wasn't bad stuff, it was good stuff, whatever you needed to know. When we planned family reunion, you had to call Angie, whether she was on the committee or not, she had an opinion and she will let you know what we need to do to have a successful um, family reunion. She was very detail-oriented. She paid attention to, you know, details and very particular about things. And that's what we are going to miss about her. There was not a week that goes by that I and most of you did not speak to Angie in some form. On December the 31st, she sent me a text message wishing me a happy new year and saying that God is going to prosper me and, and I'm sure others got text messages too, but it blessed my heart. And I talked to her again on New Year's Day. And she reiterated to me about the text message that she sent. Never in a million years that I think I would get a call from Rick three days later to say our dear cousin is going on home. But the Bible declares to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We don't understand what God has done, but we accept the will of God. The songwriter put it like this, we are often tossed and driven on a restless seat of time. Summer skies and holly tempters oft succeed a bright sunshine. In a land of perfect days, when our midst have rolled away, We'll understand it better by and by. Rick, in 1990, you became a part of the Franklin family, a part of the Payne family, and you will forever be a part of our family. We love you, but not just because you married our cousin, but because of the person that you are. You are invited always to our family reunion and any other family gatherings that we have. You will forever be a part of the Franklin family. I want to take this time and I want to ask all of the Franklin and Payne family if you would stand up at this time. This is the Franklin and the Payne family. And Rick, we want to present this to you.
Good morning, church. God bless all of you. Allen Chapel, African Methodist Episcopal Church, 2498 Alabama Avenue, Southeast Washington, D.C. We present to you the reading for Angie Moore. Will all the students please stand? When tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand. An angel came, called my name, and took me by the hand. The angel said my place was ready in heaven, and I must leave you behind. Angie left this earthly road on January the 4th, 2022. She was appointed by, she was appointed to the stewardess board, number three, by the late Reverend Leon G. Lipton Sr. Under the leadership of the stewardess president, Sister Margaret Newsom. Angie, along with her late mother, Sister Bernice James, whom she loved so dearly. Supporting members, both were supporting members of the Stewardess Board. As a devoted and dedicated board member, Angie was certain to be on time to help prepare the communion for Communion Sunday. She was our board treasurer and took great responsibility with her obligation in presenting the financial report. Angie was creative and one of a kind light with inspiration to the board. We will miss her wanting to sit on the front corner seat of the stewardess board on Communion Sunday. Our prayers goes out to the family. We leave you with this, Psalms 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen the heart. Wait, I said, on the Lord. Thank you. Have a good day. Hey, Amen. Come on, let's give our stewardess president number three, Sister Lummy, a hand and all of our stewardess. Amen. God bless you, Sister Cassandra. You can come on up here, dear. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, when I think of Angela, uh, my dear cousin, I think of the work that she has done. Everything that she does, she does in excellence. So may the work I've done speak for me. May the work I've done speak for me. May the work I've done let it speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing that can be said. May the work I've done speak for me. May the life I live speak for me. May the life I live, let it speak for me. When I've done the best I can, and my friends don't understand, may the life I live speak for me. The work I've done, it seems so small, 
Sometimes it seems like nothing at all. But when I stand before my God, I want to hear him say, well done, may the work I've done speak for me. service I give speak for me may the service I give let it speak for me when I've done the best I can and my friends don't understand me so much sister Cassandra God bless you for reminding us that it is the works that we have done that will speak at the last days for us hallelujah God bless you God bless you God is here in this place will you just throw up your hands and say thank God he's here in this place he's here I feel his presence right now and I'm thankful we are grateful God hallelujah we're going to ask Reverend Kitchens if she would come and share it acknowledgments and any announcements and also the obituary and then uh, Reverend Carey is going to come and share the church paper. God bless you family and friends that have gathered to say goodbye to Sister Angela. We were, we were friends and we spent many hours talking on the phone and I will miss her too. There have been two letters that have been submitted. Family and friends of Sister Angela James Moore. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We pause today to offer our sincere condolences to the family and friends of Sister Angela James Moore. We are thinking of you and praying for moments of peace and comfort as you celebrate and remember your cousin, Sister Angela Moore's life and legacy. To Kimberly, Melvin, Kyle, and Lauren Jones, and the Moore family, we lift you up to the Lord. While we cannot understand why things happen as they do, 
but may you find comfort in knowing that God is faithful, God is true, and God is loving. We are praying you will feel the gentle touch of his presence that will bring comfort to your heart and fill you with peace knowing that your cousin is at home with the Lord. Although her absence is painful, the Lord is with you as you grieve. You will tend and, he will tenderly assure you, reassure you of his faithfulness and compassion. Your cousin's life is your legacy. Her love for you was her gift, and her precious memories will live on in your hearts forever. Today, may you be surrounded by God's love, blessed by his peace, and filled with his abundant joy. As you walk through the valley, your loving Heavenly Father holds your hand, and the Antioch Baptist Church holds you close in our hearts and prayers. Respectfully submitted this 7th day of February, 2022, by Reverend Dr. Marshall L. Asbury, Sr., pastor and the Antioch Baptist Church family. Evergreen Baptist Church of Palmyra, Virginia. Dearest family in Christ, we, the Evergreen Baptist Church, Palmyra, Virginia, send our love and condolences to you in the loss of our beloved sister, Angela Denise James Moore. During this difficult time, we commend you to the capable hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God's word reminds us that he is a very present help. The tie that binds your heart, one, and us together blesses us. We celebrate with you the life of Sister Angela as we reflect upon her service here at Evergreen. She accepted Christ at a young age and was baptized. For many years, she was the pianist, taught Sunday school, served as a member of the missionary ministry and the King David Lodge, number 147. It is times like this that our faith is put to the test. We know that we must accept her passing and give thanks for the wonderful life that she lived. As sad as it may be, we will always have the memory of her to hold in our hearts, and we celebrate that Sister Angela's love and legacy continues to live through you. As you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, find comfort in the sweet memories of your loved one. Know that God has loaned her to you for many years and has now afforded her a home on high. Please let us know if there is anything we can do during this time of bereavement for you and your family are in our prayers. With sincere condolences, Reverend Herbert D. Woodson, Jr., pastor and the Evergreen Baptist Church family. Amen. Acknowledgements. The family of Angela Denise James Moore expresses their heartfelt gratitude for the many expressions of sympathy and thoughtful acts of kindness extended to them during their time of bereavement. God bless you all for your kindness and concern. Please pray for our comfort and strength in the days ahead as we pray for God's blessings upon you. Amen.
I am both honored and humbled to read the Allen Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church paper, and I would like to ask all of the members of Allen Chapel AME Church if you would please stand with me. To the family of Sister Angela Moore, we, the members of the Allen Chapel AME Church family, are saddened and deeply grieved at the passing of our dear member, Sister Angela Moore. We offer to you our sincere condolences. In his divine wisdom, God has chosen to call Sister Moore home from the church militant to the church triumphant. We believe that she is at peace with God and that all is well with her soul. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write. But these words are true and faithful. We pray that the many pleasant memories that you shared with Sister Moore during her lifetime will sustain you during the coming days. Know that the entire Allen Chapel Church family stands by you during these difficult days. Sincerely yours, Reverend Dr. Michael E. Bell, Senior, Senior Pastor, and First Lady Lena Michelle Bell. God bless you. Amen. Somebody say amen. I want to ask one of our leaders in our music ministry, Brother Smiles, who's on the organ, if he would play for us when peace like a river attendeth thy way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul.
If you know it's well with your soul, come on and put your blessed hands together and thank God it's well, not with my feelings, not with my heart, but it is well with my soul. To Judge Richard Moore III, the loving husband of Sister Angela, to the entire Moore family, the Payne family and the Franklin family, to aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews, nieces, great nephews and nieces, our prayers have been with you because you have lost a sweetheart. God knows, Sister Angela uh, Moore was a sweetheart of an individual. And she's going to be dear. Hey, come on. You can thank God for her. You can thank God for that reality. Amen. She's a sweetheart. Amen. And we're going to dearly miss her. And our prayers, Judge, has been with you and the entire family in this very trying and difficult season. For seven minutes, I want to direct your attention to Psalm 23, verses 4. Just verse 4. Yea, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. It shall comfort me. Sister Angela Moore was one of the most loving, one of the most kind, compassionate, giving, unselfish individuals that you would ever want to meet. She was such a servant who was meticulous and detailed in everything that she did to the glory and honor of God because she understood she served an excellent God and so she did everything in her life with excellence, effectiveness, and efficiency. We're going to miss that kind of person because most of us meet people who don't handle business well. They don't take care of things. They're not, they're not as direct. They're not as detailed. I don't want to use the word trifling, but you all know a whole lot of trifling people in this world. Sister Angela was not one of those kind. And when you're that kind of person, you do have a shepherd. You have the great shepherd whose name is Jesus. And when you have a shepherd like that, what you have learned to do is you've learned how to appreciate good times and bad times in your life. You've learned how to appreciate failures and losses because you've learned that they've taught you patience and perseverance and they taught you how to, how to uh, endure and have given you the tenacity to stay in it even when you wanted to quit. Sister Angela was that kind of person. She was tenacious. She was a, a perseverer. She was committed to everything that she did. And when you have a savior who is your shepherd, it is a something that he will do. He will take care of you. Will you just touch yourself and say, my shepherd takes care of me. In the Old Testament, when the shepherd would lead their flock in the winter time, they would lead their flock and they would have to go through the valley to get to the mountaintop in the summer. They would have to go down in the valley to go to the mountain. They would have to go down in order to go up. And the shepherd would take care of the flock. When they would get into the valley, there would be carnivorous animals and wolves and all kind of vicious animals that were praying in the clefts of the mountain looking for every opportunity that they could get to the sheep. And you ought to thank God today that you have a shepherd who's always been protecting you. I know he has protected you because because almost 20 two almost two years of this pandemic you can say that somehow I'm still here that God protected me uh, through coronavirus coronavirus to a uh, variants the Delta variant the Omicron that you can say that God has protected you uh, and the shepherd would take the sheep in the valley in order to get to the mountain huh? and the other day God had to take sister Angela down in the mountain huh? to down in the valley rather huh? to get her to the mountain huh? because anybody who walks with God every now and then huh? he does have to take you down in order to take you up huh? I pray that somebody knows this savior and the shepherd that I'm talking about huh? because everything about Jesus is up huh? your joy is up huh? your strength is up your peace is up your power is up your perseverance is of everything about your master and your savior and your shepherd is up and one day the other day the Lord decided to take sister Angela down in order to take her up and she's resting now with the Lord I can imagine she's singing around the altar you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him is there anybody here that can test 
testify that in the midst of everything God has still been wonderful and he's still been incredible to you he's done some awesome things still in your life is there anybody here that knows that your shepherd will comfort you because there's nobody like Jesus elder that can comfort you is there anybody here that's ever been in the wee hours of the night your soul was tossed and twisted and you sat there but God stopped by your bedside and whispered in your ear weeping may endure for a night but joy shall come in the morning I feel God's presence in this house today somebody shout glory somebody shout hallelujah if you love the Lord today won't you lift your hands if he's been good to you won't you shout glory won't you shout hallelujah come on and put your hands together if sister Angela was a blessing put your hands together and thank God thank God for the blessing of Angela Denise James Moore glory to God glory to his name Reverend Scales would you come and help me with this I'm going up yonder would you sing that for us and I want to ask if our flower bearers would come and take our flowers out our funeral directors if you would come as we take sister Angela out of her home church Allen Chapel here in southeast Washington DC for the last time If anybody ask you where I'm going, where I'm going soon, if anybody ask you where I'm going, ask the pallbearers if you would come and get in place please under the direction of the, the usher school go ahead Reverend God bless you Hey, hey. 